and welcome. My name is Bob Belf and today I'm going to talk to you about IBM Mobile Web Push and Web Search Commerce. Marketing people usually have control over the layout of a web page as we see here. But what IBM Mobile Web Push does is give you control over things like pop-ups, like on the left, on the right, in the center, or maybe even above. So today I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can do this with IBM Mobile Web Push. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at the Aurora website, which is the out-of-the-box website. So let's open that up. And what we see here is instantly a pop-up. And in this pop-up, we have an offer of 25% off for bags only today. And we can go ahead and click on that and get sent to the category to go ahead and continue shopping. We also have an inbox. It's a basic inbox of all the different offers that we have been offered. So we can select them and look at them, etc. So if we go back to the home page, we can also dismiss it and not click on it, and then it scrolls off the screen. So if I go to a couple other categories here that I've instrumented with some campaigns, you can see we're going to see the same thing, but a different user interface where it just pops up on the left. If I go to another category, I have it coming in on the right, as you can see here. And if I go ahead and close that and go over to electron or apparel, you're going to see that um, it pops up as a traditional uh, Webster Commerce message. So how did I set this up? Well, what I did was I actually extended the Management Center tooling and under the Configurations tab, I went ahead and put a few more checkboxes and options. Uh, so this little section down here, IBM Mobile Web Push Configuration, uh, you can actually click here to go and register for a 30-day trial if you want to do that. Um, and once you get your key, you can go ahead and enable this and then provide the key here. And we can also optionally show the inbox down on the bottom, which was down here. So what I did was I actually gone, went in and instrumented this in the footer. So if I look at the source code for the page source and I scroll down to the bottom, there's the footer and here's my code that I inserted into here. And all of this code is inserted based on those selections which we'll get to in a minute. But really, the, the, the primary code that's giving me my user interface is in the reactor on message function where I receive the messages from the server based on the data in the event I send up to the server. And you could see that this is pretty much just basic jQuery code where I key off of uh, pop-up in the position element, right, position and then left and then if it's a message I just go ahead and display a regular Webster Commerce message and you'll also notice that I set all kinds of attributes based on where I am in the site so I can key off of the different data and values that I have uh, for the particular page I'm on and I send this up to the reactor and then I simply create my new page view event and fire the event and my on message will you know conditionally be called based on whether or not um, I have a campaign out on the reactor server which we'll get into a little bit later uh, but now let's go ahead and uh, check out how I went ahead and instrumented the code so here we are in Rational Application Developer, and what I've done to instrument the site was just simply override the footer. And since I want this available on all of my extended sites, I have pretty much changed the code in the base uh, Aurora Storefront Asset Store, meaning all the other sites that are based off of this site are just going to simply use this code. And the first area I'm going to go to is under Widgets in the footer extension. Now it's important that you put your code under the ext directory 
because that's the proper way to extend the store. So when we upgrade, the changes are minimal. And you can see here in the footer data, I just go ahead and I check to see if the IBM mobile web push is enabled. And if so, to go ahead and include my footer. So each store could have it either enabled or disabled. Disabled. I also do that for uh, the UI um, Java server page fragment where I check the same thing and then I go ahead and include my custom file. And my two custom files, just really the data file goes ahead and gets the different parameters from the store configuration and puts them in a variable. And the only one I'm checking here uh, is the API key so I can get the text of the API key. And then on the UI side, I do a couple checks. If the IBM uh, push is enabled and the mailbox is also enabled, I go ahead and include the simple mailbox. And as far as the API key data, I just simply add that and pipe it out at the right place within the JavaScript header file. And you can see here, this is pretty much the code. It's fairly straightforward. I just do some very small uh, jQuery hides and shows when they click and whatnot. Um, and down at the bottom is where I bring in all of the different uh, data relative to the current page they're on. So things like product ID, the category ID, the parent category ID, the locale, the user ID that's currently logged in. So these are all the different variables that we can key on uh, in the campaign manager, manager, which I'm going to go ahead and show next. So here we are in the campaign manager, and you can see I have the four different campaigns uh, identified right at the top. I went ahead and sorted it by Aurora. So if we look at the top page, if we recall, the top page had the uh, advertisement come right into the middle of the page. And what I did is I have the same advertisement and I just position it as a pop-up. And that's pretty basic. And then if we go to another one, for instance, on like the electronics page, if we recall, that came up on the left and I just simply have the position be equals left. So my jQuery code in the JavaScript just simply looks for this variable and does the right jQuery animation based on uh, the data put in by the marketing person. So that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. Down at the bottom here, you can see the way I tie it to a particular category is I just simply key off of those fields from the JavaScript that was pumped out by the JSP fragment. So here I look for category ID is uh, 10,027 and the parent category ID is blank, meaning if a category had subcategories, this would not show up on every single subcategory. But if I wanted to, I could pretty much go down to a pretty low level of granularity on where my pop-ups show and where they don't show. So that's pretty much it, and uh, thank you for watching.